The buildings turned from the residential district to small businesses to the bustling market that was popular all days of the year. The woman said she'd be here, and she would. Rosa could feel it in each of her bones, and there were many of them. But that could be the smattering of people weaving around her, colors of hair and skin and shirts and gleaming metal. Rosa needed to stay away from those people. She moved away from the center of the market, watching from beside a row of stalls for the characteristic clashing of plates. The people here may tolerate her, but she's found that the guards won't. She's seen children get arrested here for based on uneven ground. Imagine how they'd accept her reasoning. Her feet were pounding again, as they usually did after a short walk. It wasn't the worst pain she had gone through, but she imagined it's what ripping through live skin must feel like. She needed to find the woman, and there was only so long until she'd have to hide in the basement and sit again. A mix of metal and leather came by, but they didn't notice her. Their eyes were better trained on the children who'd steal meaningless things like lockets and thumbtacks. Rosa scanned the crowd for the woman again, but nothing. This would have all been easier if she were given a name. The body tipped in her cart, and she caught it, ready to tell off whoever did this again. But the children were already leaving a trail of uncomfortable laughter in their wake. The lifeless torso leaned against her, and the wheelbarrow pressed in her, on her foot in all the places it burned. That's how the two guards must see her when they ripped her away from the body. Not as an innocent girl trying to make a living, but as something that's done far worse. Half a decade's worth of misdeeds repeated monthly. That thing left its bodies out in the morning, hollow with blood pooling around them. She's taken many apart. They're normal, apart from that one market. No struggle, no suspects, no survivors. They pulled her arms behind her back and whispered words of discontent. They've seen her before. Most guards in this area have. No one's questioned her actions, so why now? She tried using the only muscle she's built up to break, and to break free, her arms. Years of whittling down bones should have been giving her the upper hand, right? Wrong. They twisted her right arm back and locked a cuff around it. She winced and bit back tears. She could disconnect from the pain in her feet. She's lived with it all her life. But her arms burning between rough fingers broke a dam in her demeanor. Why the hell are you taking me? She demanded. I deserve to know. She was supposed to meet a guard here, one who paid her enough munson to make it through the upcoming, upcoming winter. She was supposed to finish the exchange, but instead one of the guards, Gefelso, took the payment from her pockets. She should have never taken this job not when the body was questionable to begin with. The pair brought her through the streets, and she couldn't help but notice people's stares. With the job she has, she should be used to it. Worried glances would still watch and judge her movements. But why did it hurt so much more now? They looked at her dress for signs that she's the killer for bloodstains. 
There was blood on her. Came with the job. Rosa caught whispers of angry words for it, not her. But her disheveled appearance made her look more broken, angry, vengeful. Her ankle gave out when they reached 30 feet of the gates, big looming things that separated the high ranking from the common folk. And she kept on walking, always walking, always standing. There was no other option.